Welcome back to the Limer Post Show with me, Megan Scully. I'm delighted now to be joined by Dr. Jennifer McMahon, who is a part of the psychology department in the University of Limerick. How are you getting on? Really good. Thanks for having me on, Megan. Now, I have to say there's some really interesting um, findings that you've been doing research with. Um, and I know you said there's findings from a UK study about the effects of lockdown life on mental health. Can you tell me so far what you know about it? Okay, so we've just launched a study called Cospace um, about looking at youth mental health during the COVID-19 uh, COVID crisis. So it's a parent survey, but there is a piece for young people to fill out also. So it's linked to a UK study called Cospace UK, so we're Cospace Ireland. And they launched the study about two weeks before we did, and they already have some early findings from the first 1,500 participants in the UK study. So I suppose what they're finding is that there are some key stressors for parents obviously and that a lot of parents are finding they're not meeting or feeling that they're not meeting the mental health needs of their children while juggling work and so on so probably not very surprising but i suppose it's really important to document what's happening during the current crisis so that we can actually uh, figure out how to best support families and young people i have to say i suppose it's a very stressful time for everyone because i guess we don't really know what's going on. We don't know how long this is going to go on for. I guess there's a lot of scaremongering on social media as well because there's a lot of people on there on, on Twitter and, and vice versa that are just throwing out loads of wrong information, first of all. Um, and I think a lot of people are really starting to kind of feel the effects of it now. We're in week six. Um, and it's a very long time, I suppose, to expect people to be pretty much locked into their homes. It is. And I suppose the first thing to say is that, you know, humans were very resilient, we're highly resilient creatures. And actually, the findings would say that the majority of people are actually doing okay. The majority of young people are doing okay. Of course, it becomes a bit more difficult as time goes on and uh, mental health can be fragile enough. And it's, it's, it's um, depending on changes in the environment, it fluctuates from day to day as well. So I suppose part of the study is keeping an eye on the changes, particularly as different pressures come into play. Uh, but I, I suppose first and foremost, I'd be just highlighting that you know people are doing very well overall. But there will be children, and there will be people who are take, who are struggling a little bit more. And I would there would be emerging evidence coming out from other studies also that people with pre-existing mental health issues going into this crisis are finding it more and more difficult, and it is impacting negatively on their mental health. So, so yeah, so there's a, there's a variety of situations out there, and a variety of people uh, coping with it in different ways. And I know as well that you have a survey that you're carrying out um, from the University of Limerick. Where can we find this survey? Okay, so the survey you can, you'll find on the UL homepage. Um, you'll find it on our Twitter. We have Co-Space Ireland Twitter. Uh, there is a link on my website, www.i-teach.ie, which is my Teaching for Re Inclusion Research Lab. And we're really hoping that we can get as many parents as possible to fill that out. So at the moment, we have 200 plus parents. We're hoping for a thousand parents. So it's a bit ambitious, but obviously the more parents that fill it out, the better it's going to be. And there is a space for um, 11 to 18 year olds to fill out a section by themselves once the parent has completed it. So obviously young people out there harass, you, you can ask their parents to, um, to, to fill out the service so that they can access that portion of it as well. Brilliant. Well, we'll include the survey link here in the, in the story as well. Um, can I just ask as well about what advice you would have for people who are maybe struggling at the moment? Because there is a lot of mixed information out there across social media. And I think some people are getting maybe their information from, uh, I think there's, there's places to get um, really good, strong information from. And I think that's where people should be going. So what would be your top tips to people at the moment? I was really glad that you highlighted that, Megan, because it is very important that people get their mental health advice from um trusted sources so you can go onto the HSC website you can go onto websites like jigsaw for young people um you can go on to face like tackle your feelings my top recommendation for minding your mental health is connecting to those five different things that we do every day which is obviously getting good sleep eating well uh, taking some time off for yourself but the top tip i have for people is consistency so something that you can manage to do every day for yourself will set you up for success when the pressures come on top of you. So coming up to the May the 5th, especially, when we don't know what, if the restrictions are going to be lifted, what you might find is that people start to get feel a little bit overwhelmed, particularly if the restrictions are pushed, pushed out. And it's that time when the consistency will come into play that we need to be able to, um, be able to draw on what we've already been doing. So that'd be my top tip, keep doing it every day. Perfect. I have to say, I really enjoy um, so cooking, which is something I didn't enjoy or really or make time for. Now I do make time for it and I enjoy being able to sit down and actually enjoy my meal and, and, and take time to prepare it, which I think is something that has been, in a way, it's kind of been helping my mental health as well. And I think it's something so simple that can actually be so rewarding. 
Well, a lot of people talk about mindfulness, Megan, and mindfulness is a really good evidence-based strategy for supporting people's mental health. But what people don't often realize is that a lot of those types of activities that you're talking about, like cooking and so on, they can be mindful activities, things that help us to slow down and help us to observe and take notice. So you don't have to be sitting down doing a meditation or anything like that to be mindful and getting the benefits of mindfulness. Absolutely incredible. Dr. Jennifer McMahon from the University of Limerick, thank you so much for chatting to us today in the Limerick Post Show. And as I said, we will share that survey link as well. Thanks, Megan. Thanks for having me on.